Hi, and welcome to Podcasting 101 with Rachel. This podcast is for busy female entrepreneurs who run their own businesses and want to start a podcast or who may already have a podcast. I want to share practical information and tips on how you can get your podcast started and managing it along the way. I'll also be interviewing other female podcast hosts to give you real insight into what it's like having your own podcast. Hi everyone and welcome to the show. This week I have Nick Redman with me. Nick is a voice coach. She also does voiceover work and is a host of two podcasts but um, we're here today to talk a little bit about um, the voice coaching element. So hi Nick, thanks for coming on. Hi Rachel, thanks for having me. Well it's, yeah it's lovely to be here and like I was saying um, before we hit record, um, it's something that I hadn't really thought about having a voice coach and then as mm. I said your name was popping up places and I was seeing um, you know this investment in your voice and for podcasters, also for people who want to do speaking things as well and actors and everything but obviously for our interest for podcasters. So I just find it fascinating and could you just let us know a little bit more about what you do and then also how you got into voice coaching yeah I do sometimes question my life choices when I'm doing mad uh, squishy warm-up faces to people on the internet I love that video though <laughs> like, I thought it was how so did I end up here <laughs> uh, and if you want to know what that's about check me yeah. out on Instagram Nick Red Voice <laughs> um, yeah I sort of so I started life as a performer, trained as a uh, performer, and I was kind of fiddling around the West End doing musical theatre and stuff. And then I got into voiceover and that was like liberating and exciting. And I'm suddenly aware of voice as this amazing like potential potentiality for like what you can do with your voice was just remarkable. So then I did voiceover and stand up comedy for a bit. And then I went back to drama school to do a master's in voice studies, which was where I trained as a spoken voice coach. And that was like the final piece in the puzzle. I sort of was in this world of like voice geeks and all this incredible information and knowledge about how to use your voice um, to the best of its potential. And I I was struck by the the fact that I was like, why does nobody know? Like, why do normal people not know that this exists? Why is voice coaching does? Why does it feel like it's reserved for like politicians or just performers or people who are like, you know, elocution to like, quote unquote, fix things, all this terrible stuff. I was like, why don't like, why don't everybody else who uses their voice in all those other interesting ways Mm -hmm. know about voice coaching as much and that's sort of the journey I've been on since this idea that all of this amazing stuff that has come from the hallowed halls of you know the RSC and uh, public speaking forums and all this kind of stuff how can this be packaged and shared and disseminated to people who need a quick warm up to jump on the microphone because they're recording a podcast today or need a few things to do before they get interviewed on a podcast as a guest, you know, that kind of thing. How can people find their voice on the microphone in a way that feels real and authentic and open and easy and they don't start sounding robotic and strange? Or, you know, how do people find that confidence to sound like themselves at home on the mic, basically? And that's sort of my uh, MO at the moment, is trying to peddle my wares, uh, which to the outside eye probably just looks like a lot of jiggling, a lot of peculiar voice exercises uh, (laughs) and a lot of uh, breathing and staying hydrated, which, yeah, is definitely a part of it. But um, ultimately for me, it's all about giving people really easy, simple tools to make sure that their voice is expressive, clear, engaging, open, free, responsive to the emotional needs of their communication. Mm-hmm. You know, so so that if you've got something to share that's passionate or exciting or inspiring or serious or intense, your voice can help you do that and help you make that connection with the listener. Because so often I I listen to a lot of podcasts. Mm-hmm. I'm a bit of a podcast nerd, as I'm sure you are uh, as well. Uh, so often with people, I, he- I hear these amazing stories or these amazing ideas or these really inspirational topics. And I just feel like the voice is there and it's doing its job, but there's always something. There's often a little extra something. Mm-hmm. And then when I get podcasters coming to me for coaching, they go, yeah, like, how come I, how come I, I don't sound like I do when I'm chatting to my mates on my podcast? How come I sound like I'm reading from a page or... 
How come the interview section where I'm with a guest is amazing, but my intro sounds really like stilted and strange? Mm -hmm. Or how come when I do an advert for my podcast, it's really awkward and and I sound really fake? You know, all those little things. um, And ultimately that boils down to warm ups and prep and understanding your voice, really. So that's what I do. That's interesting you say about intros and, and ads. And I think I would say the same with mine because it is a kind of performance or you're thinking about it as a performance when you're trying to do the intro. And I think there's already that barrier sometimes with podcasters about the sound of their own voice, like hearing their own voice thinking, oh, that doesn't sound like me anyway. And then you've got the (laughs) other thing of, oh, do I sound stilted or do I sound like I'm reading from a script and those kind of things. I I always think I say like, um, and so quite a lot. Does, um, the exercises and the coaching that you do can help with things like that with with how you're coming out with what you want to say yeah so it's about preparing your voice so that you don't have to think about your voice ironically (laughs) (laughs) you can focus on the text and you can focus on the job that you have to do as a podcaster are you trying to teach someone are you trying to inspire somebody or get them to think or make them feel happy or sad or entertain them or whatever it is when it comes to those sorts of uh, habits like speaking habits like ums and ahs and likes and all that kind of stuff for me it's a balance so I'm not the sort of coach who's going to take your voice and change it and make it sound not like you Mm -hmm. or tell you that you have to take all your ums and your ahs and your likes out I'm not going to tell you you have to do anything to your accent or you have to fix anything it's all about empowering you to understand and use the voice that you have in the best way possible now a lot of those ticks can be boiled down to a couple of things. Number one, some of them are accent related. (laughs) You know, I'm Northern Irish and we say a lot more words than we need to a lot of the time. Like we add words in all the time. Like (laughs) that's just my accent. And if I try to censor that, then that's a barrier that I'm putting up in front of me. And that means I can't show up as, as real as I need to or as I like to on my podcast. So it's understanding the balance between what's an accent feature and what can stay and what feels like it's getting in the way of the performance. If it's something like an um or an ah or a thinking sound, again, thinking sounds sometimes need to be there because you're thinking. (laughs) Like it's a very normal thing. And I think we have to understand it also as listeners. Listeners are used to listening to flawed conversation. And one of the problems with podcasting is we try to be perfect. We try to speak every word really clearly and beautifully, just like mum would have wanted. Um, yeah. And we try and take all of the little bumps and lumps and of, of, of conversational, beautiful, flawed, natural human speech out. And newsflash, like I listen to lumpy, bumpy conversation all the time. My husband can't finish a fucking sentence. He starts <laughs> a sentence three times. It takes ages. But, you know, I'm a generous, open human listener and that's what we mm. do. So what I say about your ums and ahs is... If they're a real issue and you're doing them loads, then you do kind of have to reflect on if you know your topic well enough. Mm -hmm. Because if you're having to think all the time, um, uh, mm, like, um, well, and you've got loads in there, then it might be that your brain is trying to give you time to think of what your next thought Mm -hmm. is or to, to remember the sentence or to remember where where the conversation was going. So it might be that you really have to do some honest reflection on how well you know what you're talking about. Because we all know how quickly we throw podcasts together sometimes. (laughs) (laughs) And sometimes it is just a lack of preparation. And you can easily cut some down by doing a bit of rehearsal. Mm -hmm. You know, Um, uh, there's another one. (laughs) I was thinking and it's totally fine. You can become so conscious of them when you start talking about them. It's hilarious. (laughs) But then the other thing about them is they are useful for both listener and speaker. So if I um... It's often because I'm thinking. Now, if I'm thinking, that's because I want to make sure that the next thing I say is useful and pertinent and necessary and interesting and not a total waste of everyone's time. Also, as a listener, sometimes you need that thinking time to process what's just happened. So if you still think you've got too many in there and you're on and on like a mad idiot, the other thing you can do is just replace them with something else. So become aware, become aware of them, listen back to a few of your recordings and, and reflect on how often they're there, when they happen, why you think they happen for you. And then think about just replacing them with a breath. Because the thing about speech is that uh, the in-breath 
the in breath, the inspiration. That's where the thought happens. Like that's just how we form thoughts. <laughs> that's how we find our the words we're going to say. They come on the in breath. So instinctively every day we do that. Our body does that for us. We don't think about it. But when you're on a podcast, sometimes it just becomes a bit clunky. Mm-hmm. So if you feel like you're going to um, the best thing to do is just to let a breath out and then let a breath in. And what you'll find is your body probably finds the thought if you just give yourself a bit of time. I've no- I have noticed that when I've been chatting with other people and or listening to other podcasts where someone's thinking about the answer and instead of saying the um or the, they there is a like a there's a breath or like a slight pause mm. um <laughs> i think some of mine <laughs> some of mine comes from nerves i think um having um yeah. some nervous energy um i know that in the just for context we um my uh podcast hosting platform is Captivate and Nick uh, they have a growth labs um session where you can um have different experts coming in to help you with your podcast and Nick came in and did a video and part of the there was some exercises and things in there and the, one of them was talking about getting rid of some nervous energy at the beginning wasn't it doing some exercises yeah. for that so I was on a call just before this as well so I was thinking I should have been doing I thought I should have been doing some of those exercises <laughs> before so I think maybe having a little routine like that before you start recording your podcast or whether it's a guest or um, a solo episode can help maybe get rid of that nervous energy yeah. as well, as well as prepare your voice. And that's why I'm such an advocate for warm ups, even if it's super quick, because a warm up's not just about getting your voice ready. It's about getting your body ready, your breath ready, your mind ready. And if you've got a big interview coming up with that guest you've been trying to bag for ages, the last thing you want is to feel self-conscious or to let those nerves get in the way. Mm. Now, nerves are normal and natural and it's totally okay to own that. And I'm actually a huge fan of advocating for yourself in those environments. So if you're, if I'm speaking to someone I'm really excited to speak to, I don't pretend like I'm not excited or nervous to speak to mm. them. I just own the fact that I'm like, sorry, even if it's before you start recording, just say, I just need to say like, I'm really nervous about talking to you because I'm such a big fan or thank you so much. This is a really big moment for me. Like own that feeling because then your body goes, oh, oh, she's in control of this. That's okay, And it does really help. So firstly, see if there's a way that you can just step into that feeling because like nerves just mean you care. And probably the person on the other side is nervous, too, in their own way. So own it a wee bit. Step one. But then warm ups help regulate the breath. They help release tension. And they make sure that if you are nervous, it's not going to affect your speech or your thought patterns Mm -hmm. or your ability to form um, a um, thought um, without um, forgetting um, every (laughs) word um, that's uh, going to come next. A a stalling (laughs) robot or computer game. (laughs) Like an AI machine. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Lots on AI. (laughs) Do not open that Pandora's box with me, please. Not not at the moment. It's too early. (laughs) Um, there's some great advice there. I think that um, ha- owning your nervousness or owning that part of how you feel. Um, I-, I do always get that, you know, the butterflies before I'm talking to somebody new, um, before you relax into the conversation. So having a little ritual that you might do before that to help to help you get into that right frame of mind. I do, I do try and um, get into... I try not to have have a little bit of space before I start recording so that I can sit down and check my equipment and make sure I've got everything turned up, my notifications turned off and things like that so I know that I'm kind of ready, ready to go. So what would be your um, kind of top tip um, or advice to help um, podcasters um, with their voice or have you got any little exercises that you would you know, maybe a five minute routine that you could do prior to talking to somebody. I've got loads, <laughs> loads of exercises and tips. They're all in the book. <laughs> what book? No, <laughs> we'll yes, the book. Um, we didn't yeah. mention the book. I didn't mention the book in your intro. Um, Nick right. has written a book called On the Mic. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that oh as God, well? Yeah. And like, yeah, I did. I'm kind of joking, like I can definitely give you some exercises, but it's 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 in these moments now where I'm doing interviews after I've written my first book, where I'm like, this is great, this is why I wrote the yeah. book, like because they're all, all the stuff is in there. <laughs> 
So I'll have to kind of remind myself that it's okay to say, yep, and they're all in my yeah. book, which is available at onthemicbook.com. Absolutely. We'll put <laughs> um, all the links in the show notes. Of course, of course. Um, yeah, so I think for me, exercises are about awareness of your own instrument. A lot of the time when people come to me and they've got a warm-up but they're not sure if it's working or whatever, it's because they find some random thing on the internet that they're just following and they don't know if it's right for them or if it's actually doing anything. So the first thing you can do is have an awareness. Start thinking about how your voice feels when you talk. You know, maybe on a scale of one to ten. How much effort is it to talk? Um, and at the first first time you do this, you might be like, I don't know, I talk all the time. It doesn't feel like any effort, actually. I think about your breath, you know. Do you find yourself running out of breath? Um, during sentences do you find yourself tripping up over particular clusters of sounds and particular words edited it digital Mm -hmm. um, hypothetical you know what is it within your equipment that gets a little bit tied and a little bit stumbly and once you've got those bits of information then you can start to inform uh, your a tiny little pre-recording warm-up so I did I did one on Instagram today and I was talking a lot yesterday and what I needed today for my warm up was not sound. I needed release of tension that built up yesterday because I was online till like 10 o'clock. Mm. So I did a lot of stretching my body, a little, a lot of um, like hip circles, shoulder rolls with gentle, chewy hums. I did some releasing my face. I released my lips, my tongue, my jaw. I got the breath flowing and, and you know, got the vocal folds vibrating nice and easily with a couple of particular sounds. And it was very easy and free and gentle because today I'm not doing well, so far, although it's only 11 o'clock, I'm sure they'll arrive, but not too much voiceover work has come in yet. It's usually a very on the day kind okay. of environment. But today, all my speaking is me. So like I had a chat with someone before this and so I'm doing this interview and then I have another chat and then I'm planning a session with a friend. So, you know, it's all chat, chat, chat today. So it's about knowing what you need to say, you know, how much vocal load or how much speaking you've got to do, what you think your vo- your, vo- your voice needs and then picking the exercises to fit. That being said, if you want a couple of fun, easy ones to try, we can do that now. Oh yeah, go on, that's, that'll be fun. <laughs> do you, this is a bit where most hosts are like, oh God, what have I signed up to? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think shoulders and neck is really useful for podcasters because we're very mic focused. <laughs> it's like, ah, big piece of metal. So a nice gentle shoulder roll. I don't know if you record the video as well. but I do, actually. I um, thought I would with this in case there was some, uh, we could put some little, show people the yeah. little exercises <laughs> that you're doing. I, yeah, I find myself popping up a lot on reels when I do these <laughs> interviews. So rolling the shoulders just to release some tension in the back and the shoulders and the neck area. And then what you can do is add on a really gentle, chewy hum. So if you get a hum, mm, mm. feeling the lovely buzz in your lips and then chew your lips around. Mm. Do the shoulders as well if your coordination allows it. <laughs> so you can do it on one note and then you can just slide up and down your range. So what we're doing there is releasing tension in the shoulders, which is great for nerves management and also for freedom of the voice. We're getting the vocal folds vibrating nice and easily with a very simple, gentle humming sound. We're getting the breath regulated nice and easily. We're also releasing the lips, which is one of the main articulators. So it's four little things and it took, what, 30 seconds? Yeah, that very simple. (laughs) Like there's loads of... Also using the breath in that way with the sound is also really nice for nerves. You know, when we get nervous, the breathing gets high and a bit juddery and a bit shallow. Just focusing on the out breath with a chew or a lip trail or a gentle glide on a, on a voiced fricative like TH or V or something with some shoulder rolls, with some hip circles, really nice, easy ways to feel a little bit more free and open and settled. It's amazing sometimes, like you're talking about the breath, how much difference it makes if you do stop and take a little bit of time with that breath I noticed um on your website you have some um a breath course is it a breath course that you breathe I've got like a little yeah. like a little download yeah it's like an eight minute meditation for yeah and breath body awareness yeah and I thought that's um like like a maybe a first step to you know introducing yourself into calming down and, and thinking about your breath and thinking about your voice in that way because as we said at the beginning and like you were talking about having like regular people not really being aware that this kind of thing and being a voice coach is available to people. And mm. I think with podcasting becoming 
uh, if we just look at it from the podcasting thing with with podcasts on the rise and it's a uh, it, lots of people are doing podcasts now especially in the online space and yeah i think that thinking about your voice is a really um would be a valuable tool because yeah it's not something that i thought about before either until like i came across you yeah i think for me it's all about ease and confidence really um a lot of people start podcasts because they have something to say and sometimes that barrier is hearing themselves back and realizing their voice sounds different in their head to mm-hmm. when it's coming out of earphones yeah. step one um but for me it's about letting people know that it's okay and normal to feel that way. You know, we're conditioned to think certain voices are better than other voices. Mm -hmm. And we're conditioned sometimes in our own personal lives and our own upbringing to think certain things about our voice and our accent and whether we should or should not be heard. So it is a process. It's a really courageous thing to start a podcast. And all I want people to know is that there are really little, simple, easy, fun, mad things that you can do to make the process of getting on the mic much easier and I get so frustrated it's the same in voiceover to be honest when people get started they're like the tech and the studio and the scripts and the mic and the you know online profiles and the website and the branding and the social media da, 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 da. I'm like hang on what about the words what about the voice <laughs> like that's literally that's literally the thing that's going to connect to you. That's that's the thing that is going to represent who you are and what you've got to say. And it's just baffling to me that more people don't think about getting a bit of help. You know, people will spend hundreds on a mic. They'll spend loads on branding. They'll get people to cue their social media for them. They'll get people to do their editing. They'll get people that they don't think they don't give themselves the like generosity of a bit of time to think about their voice. And every time I work with podcasters, they're like, Honestly, nearly every time, a little bit skeptical. Yeah. <laughs> By the end, they're like, I cannot believe, I cannot believe how much better it is now and how much, and that's not, oh my God, my work is life changing. Yeah. That is very simple, easy things about making you aware of what you need to do, how you can use the words, the language, how you can structure those adverts to feel more natural and flow, how you can get your intro to sound much more like you and not like this clunky, hi, welcome, and this is my podcast. Like how you can feel at home, how you can connect to your listener with the sound that you're making. That's what podcasting is to me. Like that's exciting. I listen to a podcast and somebody's voice and story and the words they're saying takes me away you know, t- transports me to another world or gets me excited or terrifies me yeah. or inspires me to like do a thing with my business or buy something. And it's literally the power of their voice and the words that they're saying. I mean, you can have any mic in the world, but if yeah, you know, exactly. you're not using the words or you're not using your voice in a way that's like that connects, then it's all moot. That's given me a lot to think about. And I think that I would like to saying breathing <laughs> thinking there saying um yeah it's just something that's really <laughs> new to me and I don't know why it's new to me the first like this year hearing about you and and and, and voice coaching and it's it does seem just like a natural thing that should go directly hand in hand is when you're starting a podcast yeah. is thinking about your voice and maybe you're right people do get bogged down in the tech I think that's a big thing about people who want to start a podcast that I hear about is the tech side of things is that's the thing they're mm-hmm. most worried about when actually like you're right your voice and then the content of what you're actually going to say is more important than thinking about what microphone or you know yeah. thing that you're going to to use I have never seen, sorry, I'll get on my soapbox for a minute. I've never seen a voice session at a podcast conference yet, unless it's been me offering it. And I find that just so baffling. (laughs) Particularly, it's all right. It's all right if you're like a celebrity and you're confident and you've got your voice. It's all right if you're a really experienced business person and you've done loads of public speaking and all that kind of stuff. But what if you are the person with a small business who's starting a podcast who's never spoken before in their life in this kind of environment? You know, I just find it fascinating, fascinating that it's not more of a focus. Yeah, that was me two years ago when I started my business and I did my first podcast, which was um, interviewing different virtual assistants because that's where I was at that point um, about their stories. I was so nervous about how I sounded. I really got in my own head about it. I was really nervous about 
um, chatting with different people. And the first few ones I did, I was very, very nervous, kept kind of getting distracted by my own kind of talking and my own nerves. So that distracted me Mm. in listening to what the person had to say. So having something like that, the guide that could help you get over your nerves and help you with your speech so you're sounding the best you could sound does sound like a no-brainer and it's I'm, I'm I'm surprised that people I haven't heard more about it you mentioned that you were going to go to the podcast show is that are you going in that capacity or are you, are you just visiting as a podcast? if you're listening <laughs> I'm still waiting to hear back because right. <laughs> that would be awesome if you're going to go do oh my god I'd love to that is like the pinnacle I'd love to do a session at the podcast show and I have been in touch like I'm trying but if I'm not this year, I will we'll feckin' will be next year. year. Yeah. I'm going to find the person when I'm there and be like, oi. Yeah, absolutely. What are you doing? <laughs> so what made you want to write the book, like put everything together? Um, has it been in the works for a long time? Is it something you'd considered or is it something that fairly recent idea? Yeah, probably in the last year. Well, it was always kind of sitting in the background. I just, just I was absolutely against books. I was like, no, all the amazing people before me have written books. All the people who taught me, who I learned from, who mentor me, they wrote the books. I don't need a book. I can't write a book. Uh, cut to me doing a load of stuff with clients and like recommending this book and that book and read this and have you heard of this amazing practitioner and this person influences me. Here's my bu- Here's their book. La la la. And all my clients were like, where's your book? You keep recommending everyone else's book. What about yours? And I was like, I don't, I'm not writing a book. I can't do sentences. I do speaking. And then I distracted myself from that and did the Voice Coach podcast, uh, which was the first of a couple of pod- book distraction projects, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> did the podcast. And as I was doing the podcast, I was like, oh, I think I could write a book, actually. I think I found my, I, th- I found the flow of the book by making the podcast because mm-hmm. the Voice Coach podcast basically takes you through the voice training process step by step. Mm-hmm. And my process for recording that Because I was really in a lot of it's, you know, some of there's a bit of research in there. There's some facts in there. There's some anatomy in there had to be right. So I wrote it all like word for word. So I all of a sudden had like 50 episodes of text. Okay, yeah. (laughs) And I was like, oh, I could maybe. And then I was like, well, I'll just into a book. I'll just take and make my podcast script into a book. Ha, how naive I was. Like, it was not that easy. (laughs) Uh, it's, that sounds it did give, <laughs> too easy to be true. Yeah, but it did give me the structure. And I think through that and through working with loads of one-to-one clients and, and developing my online course, the Vocal Empowerment Program, which is booking in at the moment, by the way, um, I found what my book was. And then also the clients that I was getting were nearly all on microphones in some way, whether it's voiceovers or broadcasters or a po- lot of podcasters. And I was like, well, that's my book, Speaking for Microphone. So I had a little Google, couldn't find one. <laughs> and here it is. <laughs> well, awesome. Simple as that. Yeah, it sounds so <laughs> interesting. And I am definitely going to give it a read because you have inspired me to want to work on my voice. I think it would help me um, with my nerves, with my ums and the ahs that I think that I have. Yeah. Um, and I do think that... It really would. Yeah, so that is definitely something that I will be thinking about um have you got anything there else is a bit I was gonna say there is a bit in the book do you want a bit of ASMR oh. <laughs> um there is a bit in the book that is um that so it talks you through you know if you get nervous mm-hmm. this exercise is really useful or this is what to do with a warm-up if oh. you're feeling a bit nervous type oh, thing that's so good at the back there is like a um where is it Trying to, that's really good air, isn't it? <laughs> Index. Um, oh, I can't find it now. But uh, yeah, it's basically like if you're doing something, you feel a bit nervous. Try this exercise, mm-hmm. then this exercise, then this exercise. <laughs> oh, that's really good. That's really so, helpful. Yeah. So it's so. full of those kind of helpful advice and tips to use depending on yes, what it's a, that you're. It's a doing, a doing book. book. Like I contacted people and I was like. They were like, I'm really enjoying your book. I was like, oh, where are you up to? They're like, I've only just started because I can't I can't do the next chapter until I'm in my 
living room or my studio or whatever. Oh, okay. Um, you can read it. You can just read it, yeah. of course. But yeah, there's loads of exercises mm-hmm. in there. It's like a manual, like a how-to manual. And a bit of a kind of mm-hmm. inspirational self-help kind of mm-hmm. get stuck in. Wow. Well, I'm manual. really pleased that you came onto the show so we can let all the listeners know about your wonderful book. And what was the course that you said you had coming up? Yeah, it's amazing. It's called the Vocal Empowerment Programme and it's six weeks online with me, two sessions a week. And it's basically like everything you need to know about get becoming aware of your voice and what it needs, how to get it to the point where it's like free and easy and expressive and clear and engaging, how to make sure you've got all the breath you need for those sentences, how to get through the trickiest of like words so that you're not editing for ages and ages because mm-hmm. you keep making mistakes. There's also a lot of vocal health stuff in there. So what to do if you wake up when... You've got no voice, but you have to record, you know, it's basically giving you all the tools you need to be your own voice coach day to day. (laughs) Um, It's all about empowering you to feel like you know what to do to get your voice in the best position for recording. Yeah, and it's starting on the 9th of May. So I'm booking that in at the moment. The early bird is... uh, Open for registration. Brilliant. We'll pop a link for that if um, you're interested in the show notes. So you can find everything out about Nick, about her podcast and her book and her coaching programme. And I just want to thank you so much for coming on today. And I've okay. learned a lot and I've got a lot to think about from, from what we've been chatting about today. So thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like to connect with me or get in touch, then head on over to my website. If you like the episode, then I'd love it if you could leave me a review in your chosen podcast app. Your feedback is much appreciated. See you next time.